This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com and GatheringMagic.com, your place to explore the game. Hi, I'm Steve Horton, and I'm here at Gen Con 2015, and this is my Brago King Eternal Commander deck. Uh, the interesting thing about Brago King Eternal in an EDH deck is that when he hits uh, a player, he can exile and return any number of non-land permanents that you control. Uh, that includes just about everything permanent on your on your battlefield except for lands. So what you do is with this kind of deck is you want to take advantage of enters the battlefield and leaves the battlefield abilities. So uh, knowing that this deck has a ton of creatures in it. Uh, Things like Precursor Golem can make more and more Golems each time. Uh, although the uh, back, the uh, there's a little bit of a drawback with Precursor Golem in specific, in that they if they shoot one of your Golems, it kills all of them. Uh, but being able to blink this and keep making three threes seems really good. Uh, Kira is really good for this deck because uh, it protects your creatures from being targeted. Uh, almost every blue, blue EDH deck seems like it use a Kira in it, even if it's not the commander. Uh, and Sphinx of Uthun, uh, being able to fact factor fiction every turn seems like a really good deal because it just gives you more cards. And uh, a lot of these other creatures in the deck have, like Mold Drifter, everyone's favorite. Uh, and I have a couple of creatures that uh, Archon and Lavinia uh, from the uh, Ravnica block that detain things. So what they do is they stop creatures from being able to attack or use abilities. And uh, Phyrexian and Jester, of course, uh, exiles a creature each turn if you can manage to blink Brago over and over again. Uh, although Phyrexian and Jester will keep losing the abilities, uh, you'll get to exile something each turn, which is really good against indestructible things. Daxos can, of course, play cards off of your opponent's, de off your opponent's decks and use any color mana. Uh, Omen Speaker will let you scry two every turn. So you can kind of see that a lot of the creatures in this deck follow a similar theme. Now, Blazing Archon doesn't have an end of the battlefield ability, but that doesn't matter because the ability of uh, Blazing Archon is really cool and that they can't attack you. Uh, oops. This one here is uh, a creature that untaps all of your other guys, which seems really good. And Archon of Redemption will gain you some life. And uh, this one is Riftwing Cloud Skate. Uh, you can suspend it at first and then blink it after after it finally enters the battlefield and return any target permanent. So imagine bouncing lands and things like that. Uh, there are a lot of different clone effects in the deck, like Phyrexian Metamorph, that can keep copying different creatures or artifacts on, on the battlefield and uh, changing targets each time with Brago. Uh, and uh, this is just a on -color, really cool on-color wall that can't be targeted by anything. And you can see a lot of the same creatures, uh, a lot of redundancy as far as being able to mess with the opponent, make tokens, uh, copy things, and uh, bring things back from the graveyard, and uh, prevent creatures from untapping, and different things like that, uh, all taking advantage of Brago's cool, unique ability. Uh, and uh, the cool thing about this deck is that it doesn't really rely on the commander, because even if you only get one shot at the entrance of battlefield abilities, uh, it's still they're still really good creatures, uh, and of course if, if you get your commander out and, and keep him out there, it's even better. Now, of course, no good uh, blue EDH deck is complete without propaganda. Uh, being able to force your opponent to tap out to attack you or not be able to attack you at all if they cast things is really good. This one here it gives your whole deck flash, except for lands, uh, which of course is awesome in four-player games. And uh, Flight of Fancy, I've never seen anyone else use this card before because uh, it costs four. But the cool thing is, it not only does it give a creature flying, but it draws two cards. And of course, Brago can blink that too. So imagine drawing two new cards and giving something else flying every turn. And uh, this one I used yesterday in an EDH game uh, to stop a very large uh, Hydra from killing me because it attacked at 10 and was going to double its tokens. Uh, it's uh, counters to 20 the following turn and kill me, but because I had Dissipation Field, uh, it went back to his hand. <laughs> he had to start all over. And uh, Military Intelligence uh, will just let you draw a few cards. Uh, you may not be able to see this one very well, because it's a Black San Diego Comic Con promo, uh, a Johnny Steadfast. 
And uh, if you remember Johnny Steadfast, uh, he's the one from M15 that takes up your planeswalkers and or can give uh, one of your creatures lifelink, things like that. Uh, this one is Ugin, of course. If you play any standard at all, he's everywhere, and he's really awesome in EDH. Anything that's anything that has color colors in it goes away, or you can lightning bolt something every turn. Uh, can't imagine that if, unless your EDH deck has a really really low curve. Uh, I think it's probably a good idea to put him in there. And Elspeth, everyone's favorite Elspeth, Sun's champion, uh, destroying lots of things, making soldiers. Who doesn't like Elspeth? Uh, this Jace is interesting because it, it's from the versus. Uh, dual deck series uh, and it also lets you kind of factor fiction a little bit every turn it's a little different it's only three cards uh, but the cool thing about playing planeswalkers in a brago deck is that you can uh, if you don't like where their counters are at you can blink them and reset their counters on them uh, and you can even use them twice in one turn that way uh, in your first main phase and second main phase uh, well, a lot of the instant sorceries in the deck are spot removal and card draw and uh, this is the one sweeper in the deck because it's instant speed. And uh, you cast it as a sorcery, you get to scry, of course, but it just destroys it. all creatures and planeswalkers, but it leaves all of the cool enchantments and things like that uh, and artifacts intact. Ojitai's Command uh, is not quite as, as, uh, as good as Cryptic Command, but it's still pretty good because it brings creatures back into life, can counter stuff, and can draw cards. And uh, this says a copy each of Treasure Cruise, uh, and there's a Dig Through Time in here somewhere as well, and Azorius Charm. Cyclonic Rift is one of my favorite blue cards in EDH because it, although it's kind of a griefer card in that it will usually make everyone very mad at you because all of your stuff is still there, but all of their opponent's stuff is returned to their hand uh, at someone's end step, so then they have to discard it all. So if you, it's a good way to kind of ruin a game, except for you. <laughs> And uh, Aetherize, another card that brings stuff back to your hand. And then Rite of Replication, everyone's fav favorite uh, instant sorcery speed uh, kicker that makes a whole bunch of copies of things and usually ends the game uh, if you copy a Titan or something like that. And Whelming Wave, another card that returns everything into people's hands. And uh, there's a little bit of card draw, some opportunity, some more spot removal. Reality Shift is a is uh, one of the few blue cards that can just straight up exile a card, and all the only benefit they get is they get to manifest the top card, which may or may not be anything. And uh, Mirror Weave is really fun because it can it can mess up games by making one creature a copy of uh, actually it makes every creature a copy of a single creature, which can lead to some very strange effects, which is why I like it. And here's that Dig Through Time I mentioned. So plant form is kind of another copy thing that actually bounces the creature too. And then the standard lightning greaves and swift hit boots. Uh, sad bot for drawing cards and bringing back uh, land every turn with Brigo again. And a caged sun. Some, uh, some mana fixing with key rune, a battle sphere to make a whole bunch of mirror. A soul ring, my favorite soul ring art. And a bite for drawing cards and forcing people to attack into you, which can be really good. Hey, and some more mana fixing. A Sapphire Medallion to reduce the cost of your spells. And the rest is just basic land and a, ma a maze of eth. And uh, a high market. And uh, let me see if there are any other special lands in, in this deck. I think there's a City of Brass right there. And a Muta Vault. Otherwise, it's evenly divided between plains and islands. Uh, there's a Ghost Quarter. And a Command Tower, of course. Unless you're playing mono color, you going to want to run that. Ancient Cigarette, which actually has gotten me into trouble before because sometimes you'll have an instant or sorcery in hand that you can't cast because this is your, your your five color land that only works with creatures. And Rogue's Passage to make sure your your Brigo gets through and make sure you get to blink things. And uh, I think the rest of these are basic with uh, uh, an Articar Wastes and a High Market, um, mostly because I can't afford a Diamond Valley. And uh, Temple of the False God. There's that Maze of Ith, a Flooded Strand for filtering your land out, and that is it. Anyway, this deck is a lot of fun if you like Enter the Battlefield abilities and you like uh, Commanders that fly, and uh, you like having a lot of cool triggers to work with every turn, and all the while messing with everyone at the table. Thanks for watching CMDR Decks. Please subscribe and favorite.